Okay, we're back with part two of the cars um, stereo. Was it stereo something something? What is it called? Moving in stereo. Uh, so we're going to the cars moving in stereo opening sound. Um, just as a quick recap, in the last video, basically what happened was I was getting almost like quantization. So it's not a smooth transition. It's it's kind of jumping between the notes. So if you listen, you can hear the octave, major third, perfect fifth, um, seven, and then the octave again. I want it to be smoother, kind of like it is in the higher octaves. So it sounds like a true sweep. And I'm just not getting that true sweep sound from this filter. Now there's two ways I've, I'm thinking of approaching it. One way is I could take one of the tones, right? One of the, um, one of the, oh God, where is it here? One of the oscillators and actually just bumping it up an octave to give that extra harmonic content. So it might be something like this. We might try that and see if that fixes it. Not really. Um, same thing. So we could try this. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> Let's try this. Okay. Lower notes produce better harmonic content, apparently. So what I might do is I might go to my mixer, add some of this in. Okay, so that's, that's better. Let's see if it's better now this way. It's still better with this. Now that's that's all well and good, um, but listening to the sound, you can hear that it's like it's it's not this deep a note. So how do we get the harmonic content without dropping these notes so low? So here's what I wanted to do. Um, I'm gonna instead of use this filter, I'm gonna try a resonance sweep with effects instead to see if it gives a smoother. Um, transition. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save what we have. I know I did this already, but I'm gonna save a second version of it now. So I'm gonna write this. And so instead of using the filter sweep, um, I'm gonna say effects. So I, I kind of have a reminder to myself that I'm actually using the effects channel to create the sweep as opposed to the built-in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open this wide up and get rid, rid of our resonance entirely. So it's just, right? And now I have to get rid of that bass note. Okay, so far so good. Now let's jump into the effects. Oh, and save often. Okay, so we need to assign to effects one. We'll turn the effect on. Now I need to find some sort of sweep. So, not random, it's not a wah, I'm looking for, well, let's see if we have some sort of sweep that we can use. It's, it's basically a low pass filter, right? So that's, I, I wanna kind of replicate that using something here. So let's see, that's more of a mastery cue and it may not even be able to do what we're asking of it. Um, yeah, no, it, it's, that's just straight EQ, so that's not going to work. I'm pretty sure this is going to do basically the same thing, though. Yeah, no, there's no, um, no option to kind of have things be resonant. So, let's experiment. Let's see what the random filter is actually doing. It's just stepping through waveforms. Could we control that somehow?
not working entirely either. Well, that's a stereo isolator, that's an enhancer. Is there anything in here? Well, that's a ring modulator, that's not really going to help. No. This is tricky because I really do need the filter. You know what? I might need to do some trickiness. I don't know that this effects idea is going to work um, because I don't really have a low pass filter that's controlled from here. So I may need to just very much uh, do it here. So let's go back to what we had. Actually, I'll show you kind of a, show you a shortcut that I use. I've, I've saved it. I didn't make any changes, so I'm just going to leave and go back in. There. So, let's go here. Resonance 90. Okay, so here's where I'm going to use some trickery. I'm going to put a high-pass filter first, so I'm going to put them in serial. So the first one's going to be a high-pass filter, so that we're getting rid of a lot of the harmonic... Uh, low harmonic content. So if I were to throw something that's low in there, so if I were to throw lower notes in there, hopefully the harmonic content will come through, but the filter will still affect it the way I need it to. So let's go, that was 50, uh, resonance was 90, and Oh yeah, it helps if I um, kind of assign this to the EG, doesn't it? So, level intensity, raw. Yeah, that's okay. That's what I was looking for. So instead of filter A being there, it's filter B. And that's 30. Let's try that again. Oops, let's take that off. Yeah, see, that's still bothering me. Hmm. We need to get harmonic content through. gnarly, but that doesn't really help. Now my concern is that it may not necessarily be doable, but let's see what happens. Something I'm noticing is that the whistle, if you when once you hear it get up high, it, it's really smooth. It's not like that sounds kind of like buzzy, like it's um, ticking almost. This one is nice and smooth. See here, it actually sounds like somebody whistling. So it could just very well be that. My oscillators themselves need to change. So let's just, again, experiment. Mm, 
still buzzy. Let's see if I can find something smoother sounding. You know what? Mm, I hate doing this. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the HD1 synth. And the reason is, in my thought process, I'm going, well, these waveforms that the AL1 is providing don't have the harmonic content needed to um, get the resonant filter smooth. So I'm going to scrap the AL1 synth and go use um, HD1 instead. So let's see what we can come up with. So let's go single wave. And instead of using a saw, I'm going to use a sine. We'll start with that. And I definitely need to calibrate the screen, but I'm not going to do that now. I haven't actually calibrated it yet um, because I'm using the pointer. I, I really should. It would make sense to do so. Okay. Now, good news is, is for the filter, we already kind of know what the parameters are. We don't have to go exploring again. So I'm going to go 50. Resonance was 90. Um, filter mod, this was going to be mod, uh, knob 5, and we're assigning 30 to it. And then here we're going to set it as 99, 99, and the release is flat. So. to go there. And it's doing a whole lot of nothing. Hang on a second. I must have missed something, maybe? Here. Velocity, filter, velocity to A. Oh, um, hmm? I must be missing something. Well, let's go back to the filter and just make sure this definitely works the way it's supposed to here. Oh, well, it very well actually could be working the way it's supposed to, but we wouldn't know anyway. That's good times. Okay, let's use a different waveform. It's all about troubleshooting when uh, you're not totally certain. Okay, that's better. So you'll notice how different um, waveforms react in different ways. So if we grab square, We grab a pulse, even something like an accordion or a guitar. Yeah, the organ doesn't even get affected. Okay. So you'll notice different waveforms have different ways of, of reacting to this filter. And you'll also notice the pitch isn't the same either. So that's something we'll have to go back and revisit once we get a waveform that's close. experimenting here.
Mm, not liking any of those. So it sounds like it could be just a saw. Experiment. What I'm listening for, by the way, is um, a whistle. So I still hear it kind of, I don't want to say fluttery, but more like um, I can hear the the fact that it's, like I can hear the peak of the wave happening over and over and over, so it's a very, very fast, it sounds buzzy, basically. And I'm looking for one that'll make it sound smooth like a whistle. Sounds like a phone. That sounds promising. Okay, let's try it. It's really close, but there's something that's not quite right.
so what's happening is the filter's opening too much, so my control of the filter needs to be reduced. Alright, you know what? I am much happier with this than I was with what we had originally. Now, I'm not happy with that. Where it's like out of tune and it kind of decides to become resonant. But you know what? Synths have character of their own. Yeah, every synth has character for whatever reason, and you know what, I'm going to, um, I'm going to be happy with this as it is, and uh, I'm going to add some effects to it. So let me save. Stereo open. Oops. Oh, let's. There. Ta da! So that's the start of it, anyway. this pitchy G yeah that has no impact all right so last thing we're gonna do just real quick because I imagine um, my phone's gonna run out of space in a moment so I'm gonna throw a verb on let's hear what it sounds like all right it helps if I sign here oops Okay, let's listen to the original. Okay, the only thing I don't like um, is that yop sound that it's kind of just, I don't know what it's doing. The uh, Actually, I can tell you exactly what's happening. The uh, envelope is closing too fast. better. Alright. Uh, my apologies that I didn't get this faster. It's a learning curve, um, you know, and I'm still learning lots. And uh, just now I learned that, oh, what the heck is going on here? I must have changed something. Ah, uh, you know what happened is I, um, I must have changed the mid gain by accident when I was using the Tomber track control. So, eh, whatever. That's fine. We'll just throw her back. Cool. That works. I'm happy with that. Um, 
As usual, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, for those of you that are interested in having it controlled automatically, um, very simply, when you look at your filter control here, uh, excuse me, here, uh, I lie all over the place here. So our AMS is our control source. Um, you could have simply assign that to like um, common LFO, and then what you would do is change the LFO speed. and the amount, since it's using too much. But anyway, um, since that's not what we're doing, we're using knob five, we're doing it manually. That's how you control it, manually versus automatically. So if you have questions, let me know. Thanks.